Hey everybody, thanks for stopping by. In this video we're going to talk about adding the first corals to your reef tank. A question often asked is which corals are best for a beginner? The typical suggestion is soft corals and leathers, things like green star polyps and pulsing xenia. These are all good suggestions for adding movement and life to your tank. But what they don't always tell you is that corals like xenia and star polyps will grow like weeds and overrun your tank. I've seen tanks so overgrown with xenia and green star polyps that people have to break down their tanks and start over, or call in a SWAT team to get rid of that shit. Not many beginner hobbyists are equipped to control them. The two corals I suggest are photosynthetic gorgonians and zoanthids. Both of these species are easy to care for, tolerate less than perfect water, and will grow fairly quickly. These corals will give you an idea of how your system is working and when it is time to add more coral to your reef. You should stick with the photosynthetic gorgonians as the non-photosynthetic variety require very specific and extensive feeding and usually just wither and die in a short time. Gorgonians require both moderate to high flow and moderate to high lighting. I added both the purple brush and the purple frilly gorgonian and they are doing well. Now let's talk about zoanthids and palithoas. Distinguishing zoas from pallies for beginning reefers and crusty old reefers alike can be impossible. So I'll just use zoas to describe them all. The most important thing to know about zoas is they may contain palitoxin. This is a highly poisonous substance that can not only make you violently ill, but it's difficult to diagnose and treat and can even be fatal. For this reason, caution should be taken when handling these corals. When working with zoas, you should always wear protective eyewear, gloves, and a respirator mask. No matter where you get your corals from, you should always dip them before placing them in your tank to avoid introducing unwanted pests into your ecosystem. I use Julian Sprung's Revive Coral Dip. It works just as well as anything else. No coral dip will guarantee that you won't add pests to your tank, but not dipping your corals will ensure that at some point you'll add some shit to your reef that you'll wish you hadn't. With zoas, I always take the extra step of dipping them in hydrogen peroxide to prevent any nuisance algae or algae spores from being introduced into your tank. Just use straight 3% hydrogen peroxide. Don't dilute it with tank water or anything else. Leave it in for exactly two minutes, rinse in tank water, and place it on a rack in your tank. They should open just fine within 24 hours. Now let's talk about zoanthids and their place in the hobby. In the old days, we just called them button polyps. Some were yellow, some were green, orange, blue, and others were a combination of these colors but they were all just button polyps. At some point a few years ago, someone decided to give them exotic names like Armor of Gods and Rings of Fire for marketing purposes. People will pay a lot more money for the latest hyped up nuclear bug suckers than they will for ordinary green button polyps. Don't get all tangled up in this marketing hype. Some of these designer or collector zoas can sell for $100 or $1,000 a polyp or even more. When the hype burns out, these zoas always drop in price. Just choose the colors that you like for your reef. When someone looks at your tank, they won't be any more impressed by a coral just because it has a name like Fuzzy Butt Cracks. One of my favorite parts of a reef tank is a nice zoa garden. Usually these are built on an island away from the main rock structure. This canvas of color will brighten your reef and when grown out, will be a focal point of your aquarium. It's not difficult to do, but plan your garden carefully. Use colors that complement each other and leave plenty of room for each type of zoa to grow and reproduce and claim its own territory. So let's talk about how to handle your frags. If you have several polyps on a frag plug, it's best to use bone cutters and cut the stem off the plug and just glue the disc in place. If your frag has only two or three polyps, most of the time it's really easy to dig under the glue with bone cutters or a scalpel and your frag will just pop right off the plug, making it easy to glue your frag directly to the rock. Now there's no need to pay for expensive frag glue. Dollar store glue will work just fine. As long as it's made from cyanoacrylate, you're good to go. Just check the ingredients and make sure to use super glue gel. The liquid stuff is just impossible to work with. Zoas generally do okay in low light, low flow conditions, but as long as you aren't frying them or blasting them directly with flow, Zoas will thrive pretty much anywhere in your tank. Another important thing about zoas is that they like consistency. 
and don't like being moved around a lot. It may take a month or two for your zoas to start reproducing and spreading out. Just leave them alone and eventually they will do their thing. And once you've added corals to your tank, it's time to pay close attention to your water parameters and keep them consistent. I like to keep my salinity level at 35 parts per thousand or 1.025 to 1.026 specific gravity. Temperature at 78 degrees Fahrenheit, calcium between 400 and 450, alkalinity between 8 and 10, pH between 7.8 and 8.3, magnesium around 1300, nitrates between 5 and 10, and my phosphates between undetectable and 0.05 parts per million. Establish a consistent and disciplined maintenance schedule and these levels shouldn't be hard to maintain. I do a 30% water change every two weeks and dose the tank with Tropic Marins all for reef with a single head dosing pump. In the next video in this series I'll go over all the equipment I use on this tank and why I chose what I did as well as which testing kits I use. Well I hope you've enjoyed the video and I hope you were able to learn something. If you'd like to follow the progression of this tank just hit the subscribe button and smash the bell so you won't miss any future updates. If you have any questions, just leave a comment below. And thanks for watching. And until next time, be nice to each other out there and try to have some fun with this reefing thing.